RPG A Day Month continues apace, and I sit here as I record, surveying the kingdom of Spike Pit, considering my next move from the throne of my kingdom, the driver's seat of the family car. Hello, I'm Colin Green, and you are listening to Spike Pit. The prompt then is thrown. I've got three main points and a couple of call-ins for you. Let's get on with it. I did a quick search on the internet for, I think I put in Conan's throne, because one of the first things that sprung into my mind was the image of Conan sitting in reflection on this amazing throne i didn't realize this was known as the iron throne and there's all sorts of artwork uh, different versions of this image there's the one with arnold schwarzenegger uh, sitting on like a, a throne of knives and many and many different I, I think one of them is is probably a frank frazetta i'm not entirely sure but that's ringing a bell in my mind and I'm sure there's lots of listeners shouting at their phones or listening devices at this point. A, a powerful image, nonetheless, real fantastical um, sword and sorcery type stuff. The, the, the image of legends. Now, the other trope, of course, for the throne is what I like to think of as treasure traps and tricks or the three t's if you've ever done much games mastering i i can't believe you haven't had a throne room of some description in one of your dungeons or one of your adventure locations and chances are if there's a throne there's some um, one of those three t's creeping in you've either got a, a an escape route behind it a secret door of some sort You've got a, a trap door in front of the throne, it's somewhat like, uh, well, you see it in Return of the Jedi in Jabba's Palace. But I'm sure there's many, many examples of fiction, in fiction and uh, in film, where you've got some kind of authoritarian leader talking to someone and he's, he's grown tired of what they've got to say and he just pulls the secret lever and, and the floor opens up, the unwary subject falls to their doom and some kind of grisly death, and probably with attendant blood-curdling screams and yells. Also, a chance to secrete some treasure, little hidden compartments with um, various doohickeys and enchanted items, gems encrusted into the design of of the throne itself of course the throne itself if it could be moved they tend to be super massive constructions but if it could in fact be moved it's going to be a valuable item in its own right this brings me on to the third thing i thought about and it is probably after thinking about conan it, an image that popped into my mind was the time machine as described by H.G. Wells. This guy, um, I'm a little bit sketchy on the details, but basically this fella has built this time machine in this room. It's described as some kind of chair, uh, sitting quite high, he sits up on top of this machine. And then when the, when the machine is activated, it, it doesn't move. Everything goes on around it. So he's he's drawn back through time and he can see all this playing out as he sits atop this machine i guess the fact that he's sitting up there a little bit higher in a in a chair made me think of uh, this idea of a throne and that of course could be a a great idea a throne as a time machine and all the adventure and and confusion and whatever else that could kind of come to pass if you work this into an adventure so i, I think uh, uh, a hg wells style throne 
in your game would be something awesome. I've never done it, but I'm super tempted now. So that's it. That's the three. We've got Conan on his iron throne. We've got um, the three T's, treasure, tricks and traps, and HG Wells with his time machine. Let's get over to some call-ins referring to previous episodes in RPG A Day Month. And the first one is from Jason Connolly. Take it away, Jason. Hey, Colin, Jason here. Caught up to day four of RPG A Day Weapon. I'll be listening to these on my days off, so I'll only call you sporadically with comments. But I've enjoyed your output so far. As far as tactics go, I think that's a very important distinction between strategy and tactics, and and the chess example is a wonderful one. And I enjoyed your discussion of tactics outside of physical combat during that episode. The thing about the weapons that I find interesting is not so much the weapons, but, you know, you use that to highlight a book. And, you know, we have these books that we read, and then we reread and reread, and that, you know, we know sections by heart, but we keep going back to them. And I think it's interesting that, you know, especially when they're not, you know, stories or poems or, you know, not literature, but they're reference guides, but effectively, and, but we still go back and back and back. So thanks for the call, Jason. It is interesting, the whole book thing. The books I choose to keep, the books I tend to get rid of. For reference books, I, I'm loathed to get rid of them, really. The, um, the book about the sword is quite scholarly it's got a decent bibliography in there and footnotes and everything so if you're looking into a particular subject around swords there's a good chance it's going to be in that book Um, i just also like the way the book is made it's it's a, a nice quality hardback yeah i just refer back to it every now and then i'm not actually a massive sort of uh reader of fiction I don't really know what it is. I think sometimes, if I'm just sitting around reading, I feel a little bit almost guilty if it's uh, fictional. It it feels like a little bit of a flight of fancy. And I don't really know why, because you can you can definitely learn stuff from fiction. Maybe I feel a little bit more studious when I'm studying something with a historical content or... Uh, something a bit kind of cultural I don't know I don't know it is what it is and the next caller is Carl Rodriguez take it away mate hey Colin don't mind the shark vacuum in the background and uh, really cool podcast it's kind of fun that our podcast well I guess they're all going to be somewhat complimentary but today especially since you put all your hat into the sword and I contrasted sword versus spear so pretty cool I like uh, how this RPG a day thing is developing it's pretty fun and you know whether we correspond or not or we publish our own are able to leave a message or not it's pretty cool I know we're all listening so great stuff great positivity because that's the goal right Um, based on Mr. Chapman and Anthony Ruinslinger's ideas so uh, there you go well I totally wholeheartedly agree with you Carl I do think RPG a day month is great fun it feels like a bit of a summertime party as we're all putting stuff together in a similar vein I know BJ at the Arcane Alienist has just started putting out a few episodes so we're getting a little bit of momentum and yeah, calling into each other's shows like this, always fun. What can you say? It's the Anchorite way. Not always super wieldy. It can it can get difficult at times, but for RPG a day month, I think it's it's fun to kind of lay back off of the production values a little bit and um, just try and enjoy it, even though it's probably the last thing I need at the moment. Ah. Who cares? Stuff it. Stuff it, I say. And that, as they say, is a wrap. Big thanks goes out to you, the listener, for taking a bit of time out of your day to listen to old Spike Pit. Take care, and I'll catch you later.